Although it happened in 1941, the effects and the horrors still linger within people. Within the darkness, they were struck with blight, lost with horrendous plight. Although hope was scarce, and in the biting night, they never turned away from the precious light. Through all the trauma, the hatred, the madness, there they stood, reflecting the warmth of each other, passing it on like a beach ball when one felt glum, when one felt sadness. Five days after the terror's battle cry, a child struggles to find their ally. Lost and alone, the child hides, scared to face the enemy that lies. Women stand alone, supposed to be sensitive, obedient to maintaining the home. They need support, yet they stand alone. One, two, three, and then a few more. Men in striped pyjamas line up once more. Standing silently, they await their fate. The sound of terror's cry strikes again. Silence. It's more damaging than you think. Other races put their hands out. In kindness they reveal their hearts. You spit and slap it away in disgust. Upon the same ground we walk upon, but yet you choose to be unjust. Why? Why do we await this fate? But this is in our heads and not in our words. For we are too scared to speak, too scared to move. No one dares to do something without their word. We were brave. We were strong, but not in front of them. We all cower and huddle together like a beetle in the cold. Another day dawns. We are still ravenous as usual. We pray and we pray to be let go, but no one seems to hear our own battle cry. But even during my most darkest hours, I knew there would be a shining light at the end of it. Memories, they keep us sane. We think of our missing allies in the day. We think of their last smile words and their hope in the noon. As the night rises, we still think of them. But still, darkness envelops our streets. Hearts as cold as stone won't be warmed by our hate. What can we do? Although it happened in 1941, we still remember you.